Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Summer for those who are new. Today I'm going to be doing a long layered haircut tutorial. A long layered haircut is probably the most common haircut in salon and I'm gonna show you guys how I go about creating that look on my own clients in the salon to get enough movement and shape in the hair without being too much. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is do some nice sections. Sectioning is key for any good haircut even with something like as simple or basic is the long layered haircut, but section is key. So what I like to do first is just take my first section right around the ear. I kind of like to do it kind of right along the tip as close as you can, give or take. And just pull that forward and then clip up into place. And then we're gonna repeat on the other side, do the same thing. Even right around the tip of their ear. Pull it forward, twist. And clip. All right, so what I like to do is have my client kind of position their head forward a little bit, really. Just when you're doing from the occipital bone down, it kind of just helps with the way the hair lays. And then what I like to do with my layered haircuts, really actually any haircut, is to do my back sectioning, I'll just first go right down the middle and bring the hair kind of over to the side and take my sections off of that. It just makes it cleaner and easier to move section to section. So I'll clip up my first one here. It just keeps the hair kind of neat and in its place versus like if it's all just down and you're just taking random pieces and throwing them up, it gets a little messy. Um, and then you kind of constantly are having to go in and replace, make sure the line is there and whatnot. So I just think it keeps it cleaner this way. And then I'm actually gonna take off a little bit of length um, just cause the mannequin head always needs like a good haircut. So again, have them angle their head down a little bit. And then we're gonna take off another good like inch and a half, two inches actually. All right, and then again, cause we already have this nice like two sectioned off parts. We're just gonna take our next subsection. I don't like to go more than like a half inch um, you don't want to take it too thick to where you can't see your guide. So I just like to go in like half inch sections up through till I get to the top of the head. And then we're going to comb down. See how easily you can see the line there. And cut. Even if you get to where like you're having a harder time seeing your line, what you can always do is just flip the hair up. So that way it gives you a better idea if you're having a difficult time. But again, that's why you just wanna take small sections and you avoid ever having to do that. And then one thing I like to do as I move up section to section, just to make sure my perimeter is even, I'll take the corner pieces and have them meet in the middle just to make sure that they're lining up. All right, now we can just adjust her head to move up ever so slightly and we'll keep moving up the head.
then again, just every so often check to make sure that your two corner pieces are lining up and nice and even, and then just continue up to the very top till you get all of the hair cut. the back what I'll do again is I'll check here bring those two pieces forward make sure they're even and then sometimes I'll still just bring everything like back completely so you can tell whether or not if that middle section is even but it looks good so we're gonna move into layering now okay so now that I've cut the back length um, the perimeter before you move into layering you can either do one of two things you can either layer the back or you can go in and cut your perimeter on the sides. I like to personally just layer the back, so that's how I'm gonna be showing you guys today. But you can opt to cut um, the sides if you want first. I just like to keep the sides clipped up because it just keeps the hair out of the way so there's no like intermingling, so to speak, of your sections. It just keeps it nice and clean. So to take my first section in the back, what I like to do essentially is just kind of go down the middle of the head for my first little layer section. So what I'll do is I'll go right outside the center of the middle, push that hair forward over the client's shoulder, do the same on the other side, out of the way. And then I like the finer side of my comb to start out on the bottom first, really just so it pulls that hair nice and taut. So I comb through a few times. Sometimes I comb through a lot of times, it just depends. But we're gonna go just straight out Try to let all that weight on the bottom fall out of your section first, just so you keep a nice, not like heavy, but enough weight here that there's no holes. So I'll show you guys one more time. Okay, so we're gonna pull out nice and taut, let that hair fall out. And then you can see my little guide here, sort of, where it's shorter, and then we're just gonna cut along that line. Just to bring it out and cut. And then you're just gonna go same thing. I like to kind of flip my comb just so we're getting all the hair pulled nice and evenly. Finer side to really get it pulled taut, bring it up, let that last section fall and cut. And then you're gonna move into your top, bring it up, let all that hair fall and cut. And then you're just gonna move on to whichever side you prefer first. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go to my next section. So again, take about an inch for your next little section. Keep that hair going forward and then just bring in from your one piece or from the middle, I should say, comb through finer end of your comb, pull out, let all that bottom drop and then cut. Bring it up. Okay, so now that I'm to this last corner piece right here by the ear. A lot of clients don't have as much hair in the front of their head than they do in the back. So usually with this last little bit of the back section, instead of bringing it straight out, I like to angle it back more so, just so you're keeping a little bit more weight and length at the bottom. You can pull it straight out if you want and cut. I just personally always feel like it looks a little too choppy for a long layered haircut. That's why I like to just bring it angled back. And the beauty of that is you can always go back in and cut more if you want to, but I feel like this is just your safest, best way to go about doing it where you're not jeopardizing the thickness or weight that your client does or doesn't have. So you're gonna bring it up in a way more so, keep it at an angle. And then I like to kind of just cut up with my angle. And then bring it up 
and closer towards that middle back and cut. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'll take sort of another like middle parting here and then bring all this hair forward just to try to keep it out of the way. You can clip it if you want. Um, if they have a lot of hair, sometimes that's easier. So I'm just gonna lightly do that to show you guys. And then again, finer teeth at the bottom, just so you get a lot of good tension on that hair, pull it out, let that bottom fall out, see your guide and cut. And then the thing to remember with your long layered haircut, it's a simple classic haircut. You don't have to overthink it. It's a great haircut to really kind of get you in practice of taking good sectioning. And then again, you wanna flip your comb from time to time just so you're getting the finer and pulling that hair nice and taut. And just go along and follow your guide. The long layered haircut, it's a simple haircut. You don't have to overthink it it's easy to flow through the hair. Bring it out, let that guide fall, and cut. And again, now that we're at this little corner piece here, we're gonna, instead of bringing it out, Bring it up and away. Okay, and then final thing, now that we've cut our layers in the back, what I like to do is just kind of go along the top section here. You can just split it with your comb or fingers. And I like to just bring everything up to make sure your top section is for the most part even. And then you just wanna cut any pieces that might be a little longer. We just have this little piece right here and just blend that in. All right, and now we're gonna move on to our sides. Okay, so now that we have our back cut, we're moving on to cut the perimeter of the sides. I don't ever like to go in, just pull it down and try to follow this guide. What ends up happening, you either don't cut a straight line or you take too much out or too little out. So comb it down, grab your clip and create a little subsection. I do it similar to how I do when I'm cutting the perimeter in the back, like half inch size subsections, just so you're moving clean and you're not like messing anything up. It's just easier to do it this way. And then we're gonna just pull it down and then we're just gonna follow that line and cut. All right, and take another subsection, about a half inch. Now, if your client has like super fine hair, you can sometimes get away with just doing in one big clump, but if it's not like baby fine hair, always do the subsections. And for our last piece, See, even that is kind of a little thick, but you can still easily see through your line. And like I said, you can always flip up your comb a little bit to find your guide if let's say you lose it. But I can see it there. All right, and now we're gonna put in our layers. Okay, so now that we're gonna cut our layers in on the sides, I'm gonna do it the same way I did this last little corner piece. I don't like to bring it straight out. So I just, again, finer tooth side, kind of at the bottom at first, just to get a little bit of tension there. And we're gonna go 
up in a way at an angle. And then I like to just like cut up with my angle. And then move it slightly higher up in a way and cut that top line. And we're just gonna do the next section. Make sure you've got good tension. And then go up and away, cutting at an angle. And then we're gonna take our last piece all the way back nice and tight and cut and then I usually like to just kind of do it one more time maybe not so far back but just all the way straight up and cut maybe any little hairs that are sticking out and then we'll leave it for now and after we do the layers on this other side then we'll talk about face framing in the front all right and then we're gonna again Take our subsection. We don't want to just pull all the hair down and cut. Comb down, see your guide, and cut. Next section. All right, so now that we have cut her perimeter, we're gonna layer the same way as the other side. We're gonna be pulling up and away, nice tight tension, and then cut up at that angle. Take the next section, pulling nice and taut, up and away. And then for that last piece, I like to really over direct it back. And cut it. And then again, I just go back through a little bit, bringing it more so straight up, cutting off any of those top guys. Okay, so now that I have pretty much all the layers cut before moving on to face framing. What I like to do is just kind of go across like the very top layer. I'm just gonna pull everything up. And then anything that's in this middle area, just cut. And then we're gonna do the same with the front. Bring it all the way up. And then just cut whatever is just at the very tip of that middle section, cut it. And then if we need to, just repart it. If the hair gets out of place with that. Okay, and so now what I like to do is just go in and check. You can either, if you're like looking in the mirror with your client, pull pieces forward to the middle and see where they line up, or you can come stand directly in front of your client and check that way. So that's just what I'm gonna do really quick to make sure her perimeter is even on both sides before moving into the face framing. 
So usually the face framing pieces in a long layered haircut, the clients typically want them to be long enough that they can pull them back into a ponytail. So you're not wanting like this super defined, like layered, layered, layered look. You just want it to kind of soften up this weight here around their face. So I usually will take a parting where it's right in front of the ear and kind of pull the rest back and just clip it out of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So what I usually do is I'll, we'll take the hair, take the very front piece and kind of pull it back to where it meets, like if she was gonna do a ponytail up top on her head and where that is, kind of make note with it. And then I will just kind of take my section and just sliver down with it to create my first guide. And then what I'm gonna do is just match up this other front piece with it. So what I try to do basically is just match up these pieces here and kind of do a similar angle and meet in the middle best as you can. All right, so I've taken my next section. I'm gonna come over, see the guide and just sliver down. You do want the hair to be quite damp um, when doing the front pieces, so respray if you need to. And then we're gonna take one more section, pull down. You're gonna pull the hair down, see your guide and then sliver. And then usually the very last piece, it's easy just to kind of point cut into it. And then we're gonna match up on the other side. So again, we have our guide here. You can either sliver down. I just kind of come up at an angle like this with it, starting from the longest point and just work my way up to it. Now we have our next section. We're gonna do the same thing. Follow that guide. You can even see where the shorter hair is right there a little bit and then just angle up into it. And then we have our last piece and just see all that, just point cut it in. And then usually what you can do after that is I'll take a little bit like right at the ear point again I'll do a small section and then I just like to lightly bring it forward and I feel like it helps you meet any marks that are out and just lightly point cut that. And then take your next little section. Bring it all forward. You're gonna angle your finger and just cut this little bit that's out. Not trying to like create a whole new layer, you're basically just checking and blending in. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Part kind of right at her ear. Take your section, bring it forward. You're gonna twist to angle and just cut that hair that's out. And then what you can also do for the sides, you can just kind of lightly bring the hair forward if you want to too, to kind of blend it in. So another way you can also check for your front layers if you wanna get really detailed, what I like to do is I'll again, just do a small parting 
And you're gonna bring everything up and over as far as you can and just cut out the little hair that's left out. I just find it kind of really like evens if there's any little pieces sticking out, especially for face framing, it just blends it in nice. And then sometimes you don't need to, but it's just a nice way to double check. Okay, so now that we have her cut everywhere, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get her styled, and then I'm gonna check through to see if we need to do any more point cutting anywhere, any texturizing, just to blend everything in, and then I'm also gonna curl her too, just so you can see it both straight and with some curls in there for the texture and movement. Okay, so now that we have her dry, what I like to do is go back in and I'll like, point cut and blend and check my sections. And then I usually like to texturize just through the ends to soften it up. And then I'll show you guys over here. All right, so what I like to do is I'll just take some pieces out and I just like to point cut into them to just soften it up a little bit more and add some texture to it. that one you can see the hair there that needs to get cut you always want to make sure you're checking every single haircut you do and blending in maybe any spots that don't flow and I personally like going through and point cutting at the end almost every client just because it softens the ends a little bit and for some hair types it works better than like the actual thinning texturizing shears um, if you're gonna go to town with the texturizing shears just always check with your client that they like that look and around the face i still kind of will lightly bring it forward and down right there needs to be cut. Just getting a little bit more shape to it. And we're just gonna continue checking all along. What I usually do for my very top layer, I will take my texturizing shears. I'm trying to show you guys, sometimes you get a little bit of a weight line, depending on how high up you bring the hair or how thick or not your client's hair is. This mannequin hair is a little thick. Then I'm just gonna go in and soften that line. I just, I don't like to ever go in straight across at a horizontal. I like to angle my hands. It just softens so you don't leave any like possible teeth marks. Um, you never want to just go in and straight up cut a hard line. I always still like to like kind of essentially point cut with my texturizing shears. Mm -hmm. 
Now, obviously, if your client has like super fine thin hair, you don't need to always do this, but I feel like most clients, if they're not like real thin or fine, I always end up doing a little bit of the actual texturizing with my thinning shears. I'm just in general big on dry cutting. I feel like you have a little bit more control and can see a little bit better how the hair is laying of where you need to either take out weight or not take out weight versus when it's wet. That's why I like, I don't like doing really wet cuts and they leave wet just because there's always something you've got to go back in and critique and fix. Um, so at my salon, we don't even offer a like wet cut option. You get a blow dry and style so that way we can perfect any imperfections that are in there or mistakes because once the hair is dry, it lays completely different than wet. Yeah, that softened it up a little bit more where you see much more of a blend. Okay, so now that I've gone through and texturized everywhere, I'm just gonna go through and just check the length again. Kind of bend down if you need to with your clients. Obviously in the chair, they you can pump them up or down. But um, yeah, she looks good. Okay, so we just have a nice long layered haircut. We've got a little bit of texture and movement in there. Her shortest piece comes to about right there. So the long layered haircut, you just want some nice movement to it, nothing too crazy, um, just to really blend in everywhere. Let me show you the sides. I'm also going to curl it so you can see what it looks like curled as well. Okay, so this is the long layered haircut curled. The curling always gives a little bit more texture and movement to it. Curling always does that with any hairstyle, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it straight and curled just so you can see what it looks like in both ways. The long layered haircut is a simple classic haircut. It's low maintenance. You don't want a ton of layers, just enough to kind of soften the hair and break it up and take out some weight without it being too much for people. Key tips of this haircut, sectioning is key. You wanna really do nice clean sections. It's gonna help you keep your guide where you can always see it moving from section to section and layering to layering. No more than half inch subsections when you're cutting your perimeter. And always just take your time. If you feel like you're overdoing something, just slow down, take a little bit smaller of a section and keep going. I like to flip my comb back and forth from the fine teeth to the whiter teeth so that way you're really getting even tension all throughout the hair and just remember to keep cutting along the guideline if you're new to doing hair practice makes perfect i'll link the mannequin below to where you can get them i just bought them on amazon so if you feel like you need help get a mannequin out copy my steps in this video of how I do my long layered haircut. And I hope that I was able to help anybody out who was looking for some extra tips. Leave a comment below if you guys have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next week.